Egg yolk, what's going on, viewers of the tube? My name is Tyler, and welcome to the channel you wouldn't expect to have the information it does. We like being the underdog and come here every day looking all white trashy. And some of our haters comment so much, I'm starting to get the feeling I'm looking as much as a snack to them as Sir Joseph Dierte being King Carney. Baby, and tell me who do you love? Now tell me, who do you love? It's time for Chico Crypto. Today I would like to dive into the world of DeFi because a few days ago I talked about how my strategy has shifted to being heavily focused on accumulating projects that will contribute to this blossoming industry and the ecosystem. Why are these my focus? Well, in that video, I explained that a technological achievement and kicker is usually the spark that helps start a parabolic run. Pulling up the log chart with each bubble. In 2011, this bubble took off because Bitcoin was starting to get recognized. Then the 2013-2014 bubble was because Bitcoin forks and the first coming of altcoins. The 2017-2018 bubble was the second coming of altcoins and the floodgates opened due to the Ethereum ERC-20 contract. And now here we are, almost in 2020, and I have a feeling just like in 2017, Bitcoin will be the coin with the liquidity, but something from Ethereum will kick off the next bull run. That is Ethereum DeFi. So whenever I do a video on DeFi, I get some people in the comments asking, what is that? Is that a token? Well, no, DeFi is a movement that leverages all decentralized networks to transform the old financial products into trustless and transparent protocols that run without intermediaries like a bank. So let's begin with Ethereum as it's the base layer of DeFi and has full control over the protocols and applications being built. Now, some people argue, but what about the other blockchains, EOS, Tron, NEO, or even Bitcoin? Well, dapp.com just put out their quarter three market overview, comparing the most popular blockchains. In quarter three, Ethereum had the most active users, two times more unique users than the next highest Tron, added nearly 7 million new mainnet addresses, and had the highest user percentage growth compared with quarter two. And where is the growth coming from in Ethereum? Not gambling, not games, but decentralized finance applications. In quarter three, Ethereum dApps had the highest total volume of over 804 million, or nearly 4 million Ethereum. And as we can see from the finance category, it took up 58% of that. And you can pretty much add the exchange category to DeFi, as it's a swapping of assets, like Xerox Protocol and Kyber. So actually, DeFi took up 76% of the volume. Then there were over 5.28 million transactions, which if you add DeFi and exchange is 43%. And based on active users of nearly 400,000 in quarter three, DeFi, finance, and exchange made up 55%. And here are the key highlights from dapp.com's quarter three report. DeFi has gained huge growth in quarter three. Over 525 million USD was performed by these apps. And the Ethereum DeFi dApps contributed over 88% of the total volume. Not Tron, not EOS, not Bitcoin. Ethereum and its DeFi is speaking the language of institutions and enterprises across the globe. Why do you think Ethereum has something called the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which includes all the big names, Accenture, BP, BNY Mellon, CME, Consensus, Credit Suisse, IC3, Intel, JP Morgan, Microsoft, Monax, Santander, and so many more. Just going to the members page, since the announcement in February of 2017, the list has grown to hundreds of members. And the goal of this alliance is to create a consortium that works together to enhance Ethereum and the systems that surround it so that it's ready for enterprise-grade applications. Work began on this in 2017. It has been over two years. What is now coming out of the EEA? Well, DevCon 5 is happening right now in Osaka, Japan, and the EEA is making waves. On day one, October 8th, they announced the Trusted Reward Token, a way of accruing and calculating rewards for active participation in a consortium to incentivize groups or companies. This reward token is backed by Microsoft and Intel and is the first token use case to emerge from the Token Taxonomy Initiative, which was born within Microsoft to establish value across a range of blockchains and networks, including Hyperledger and R3 Corda. Besides Microsoft and Intel, Consensus, Solutions, Pegasus, Kaleido, Envision, Blockchain, and iExec were involved in the build. 
Well, that was just the beginning, because during the night of October 8th, they updated versions and documentation of their EEA client and their off-chain trusted compute specification, which I will get into in a bit. Now, before this video gets released, something big is going to happen from the EEA on October 9th in Japan, towards the end of the day, from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. There is a big talk the off-chain trusted compute overlay testnet for blockchain privacy, scalability, and adaptability. So a testnet is getting launched, and who is presenting is pretty damn interesting. Dr. Andreas Frund, consensus, and works as a blockchain architect. Marley Gray, principal architect of Microsoft Azure Blockchain. Yvinsley Eugene Yarmash, architect for blockchain DLT at Intel, with focus on trusted and confidential compute. Jean-Charles Cabalguin and Li Zhang, both architects at iExec Blockchain. And finally, Jim Zhang, co-founder and head of protocol engineering at Kaleido. These aren't just the talking heads on the marketing and business relations side, but the actual developers and architects. So something is getting released and tested. And remember, the EEA just released updated documentation about the off-chain trusted compute specification, version 1.1. And this talk is about the off-chain trusted compute overlay testnet. So to see what they are going to be talking about and what is going to be released, we just need to dive into this documentation. As we can see, it was updated on October 8th, just in time for the presentation. Sanjay and Eugene of Intel helped edit it, along with Li Zhang of iExec. Contributors to this version include Consensus, Oracleize, SAE, ITC, Everyman's AI, Web3 Labs, Itua, and Santander Digital. But more big names have contributed to this. You just need to look at past versions. In version 1, Marley Gray, Microsoft, who is presenting this on stage, as well as the flannel man himself, Sergey Nazarov of Chainlink. Now, the document's abstract specifies APIs that enable off-chain trusted computing for enterprise Ethereum. The trusted computing specification enables privacy and blockchain translations, moving intensive processing from a main blockchain to improve scalability and latency, and support of attested oracles. Version 1.1 of this is 65 pages long and very technical, so I'm not going to go through the entire thing. It's included in the description if you want to check it out. But to help explain this EEA specification further, it was used to develop Hyperledger Avalon and their trusted compute framework, which intersects with some more big names. Alibaba Cloud, Baidu, BGI, Chainlink, SBO, IBM, Kaleido, WePro, Oracle, and Monax. Big names to say the least, but those cryptos involved with this are three. Of course, Ethereum, but also Chainlink and iExec blockchain tech. What is each going to provide and will it bring value to their token ecosystem? Let's begin with Chainlink. On October 7th, Chainlink dropped this article, which was part of the reason for the recent price pump. Driving demand for enterprise smart contracts using the trusted computation framework and attested oracles via Chainlink. Which, if we check who is co-authored by, Eugene Yarmush of Intel, who will be presenting at DevCon. In this blog post, they reference Intel's recent post titled, New Confidential Computing Solutions Emerge on Trusted Compute Framework. And they also discuss public blockchains, as well as outline the TCF architecture and how attested oracles via Chainlink can enable bi-directional connectivity between on-chain and off-chain environments. And in this blog post, the TCF is shown at a high level, with Chainlink being the connector between Ethereum and the outside trusted compute service. Deeper in the post, they give us more information. Chainlink gives the TCF trusted connection to input data for contract execution and to external networks for relaying output data for contract settlement. It can also relay attestations from TCF to the blockchain to prove that the computation was done correctly prompting the production of timestamped cryptographic receipts for all parties. With two technical graphs showing how it works. In the first diagram, curing on-chain contract creates a request for the TCF to complete a work order. The Chainlink node is tasked with routing the message between the two environments and retrieving external APIs that may be needed for execution. In the second diagram, the TCF returns a result back to the on-chain contract based on completion of the work order. The consuming response can be a testation of completion or trigger further action from the on-chain contract, 
such as some type of settlement. What type of settlement? Of course, finance and DeFi, but they also talk of OTC derivatives, insurance, and the entire market of global trade. But what about iExec, as they are the ones presenting at DevCon? Well, they put out their own blog post about the collaborations and presentation. They said the presentation will prove the specs have moved from paper exercises to implementation. Five EA members have joined forces to build a working prototype application that complies with EA Trusted Compute specification. This is the EA Trusted Reward Token to incentivize EA members to participate in more EA activities. The result is a TTF compliant application running in Basu. What is Basu? It's from Hyperledger and it's an open source Ethereum client that runs on all the Ethereum networks. It includes two consensus mechanisms, proof of work eth hash and proof of authority. You can use Basu to develop enterprise applications requiring secure, high performance transaction processing in private networks, as Basu supports privacy and permissioning. The application is hosted on an off-chain EEA compliant trusted compute pool, and this pool is deployed by a exec on a Microsoft Azure SDX enabled virtual machine. The key here is the trusted compute pool. Pool is the key word, because if we check out iExec project documentation, which was suspiciously updated just before DevCon on October 3rd, and in section 3.4, they talk about worker pools, organizing computers and nodes into pools to provide work distribution. Then let's go back to the EEA trusted compute specification and search for the word worker. It comes up everywhere. And then searching by worker pool. Just read what comes up as the first result. A worker service can support a single worker or a group of workers. Workers may be registered individually, enabling requesters to select a particular worker for work order execution, or multiple workers may be registered and managed collectively as a worker pool. Then if you search iExec's worker pools and look at public TEE or trusted execution environments, they have a public iExec worker pool for Intel's SGX enabled machine. It guarantees code and data loaded inside to be protected with respect to confidentiality and integrity. All I gotta say is I connected some damn fine dots. Now tell me, who do you love? Cheers. I'll see you next time.